I think it's beginning to become a buyer's market. Mm. Um, a lot of the a lot of the listing listed homes that I've earmarked and that I've said, and I noticed that a lot of them are going are selling are are being reduced ten mm. thousand fifteen thousand. So um, I think I think it's a it's a good time for for investors to be in, in the game. Hey, this is Niti, and what you're about to hear today is a very special episode with one of the members from our portfolio program. We call these Sensei Sessions. These interviews are designed to give you a perspective about what you can achieve with the right strategies and execution. I hope you enjoy this episode, and for free resources, check out our show notes section to see how you can build and scale your portfolio. Welcome everyone to our Sensei Session. I'm your host, Cheryl Tan. It's our opportunity to hear from portfolio program students and hear about the success that they're having within the program and the deals they are making. We are happy today to welcome Dewey Kabitak. All right, so Dewey, I'm excited to talk with you today. Uh, welcome, first of all, tell me, where do you live? And yeah. how did you get interested in real estate investing? Okay, I live. I currently live in um, California, Northern California, in the Bay Area, and um, I was always interested in real estate investing. Well, in real estate in general. Um, previously, my brother and I we had a mortgage brokerage company, and um, we we left that go for a bit. And um, I've had a couple investment properties here and there, and I got burned. I was successful in some, I burned in others. And um, so it was always in the back of my head as far as I'm getting into real estate. Yeah. But, um, you know, that's more, or we move on, get interest changes. And, you know, sometimes it's full circle. So, yeah. And it sounds like it may be as you tell us about your deal. How did you find Niti and Pollock? How'd you find the portfolio program? It is odd because I was just browsing. I'm not sure if it was Facebook or on the internet. And um, I came across Open Spaces Women, and I thought, oh, okay, let me hear, let me click and hear her story. And her story resounded so much with me as far as you know, in the corporate in the corporate um, environment, busy with life, want to do real estate, but you know, um, it's just so busy. And I was I was hesitant to try it out because it says women, so I thought it was just for women only, <laughs> but. You know, I just went in and um, I, I opted to um, listen to your story more and enjoy that five-day portfolio. Nice. I know. Yeah. And information is good <laughs> for yeah. anybody, yeah. right? <laughs> Very much. Yeah. Okay. So I want to hear about your deal. I know you are you are in the middle of the process, but yeah. I feel like your story can help so many people because yeah. you started, you, you've been investing for a little while, but you actually yeah. started the official program just a few months ago, I, maybe what, a month ago, actually in December. Yeah. Right. So yeah. tell us about your deal. How did you, how did you find the information that you learned and how did you zero in on the property that you have under contract right now? Right. So as far as the, um, the deal that I found, it was, it was, I, I currently have a, um, two investment properties in Alabama. You know, I'm in, my market's in, Al in Alabama. Okay. So I currently have two in Alabama and I work with a real, my realtor there. And um, um, he actually um, introduced me or showed me several properties uh, there. And I was, I was hesitant to go on to this deal only because uh, the other two properties were under my name, and um, I was unaware of um, hard money lending at the time. And it was it, the, the the third deal would have put me over on my debt to income ratio. And um, so he introduced me when when after a few weeks of being into the program, I I just after I signed up, I just went through the whole, I basically binged on all of the um, all the all of the modules. And um, I got to the hard money lending and light started to click. And I called my realtor and said, you know, let's see some let's see some properties. Let me see if I can do it this way. And um, so he, within three weeks, three to four weeks of um, being in the program, I just started looking, analyzing deals. And um, this one just happened to be, it's, it was an off-market deal that my realtor said, 
hey, do it. Do you want this? <laughs> I ran the I ran the Burr calculator. All the numbers seem to be work, working out fine. And I said, let's go for it. Wow, it's and interesting. Just, yeah. Uh, so even before my LLC was set up, I was like, oh my God, what am I getting myself into? I don't have I don't have the back end infrastructure all set up yet. So your big... your agent, your realtor was uh, on it, right? It's interesting how all of it comes together at once where you thought you weren't ready, but mm-hmm. you have your agent who is helping you and then you have right. the modules that are backing up what the right. agent is saying and right. it kind of helps move you to a different place. It, it was did. kind of anxious though, wasn't it? So how did you get over that hump? Um my thinking was, I, I don't know, and I think the the big the big thing that helped me was in the in the first modules when Palak was mentioning why, determine your why. Is so if your why is strong enough, then you just go for it, right? And my why, my why for me is, um, you know, again, I'm sure it is with everyone else, just to have the time and financial freedom to do, to have resources to do what you want to do, right? And my, for me, the my why is strong enough and uh, um, instilled within me. So I just said, you know, go for it. I've I've dabbled, I've dabbled in um, real estate, some successful, some not. I dabbled into crypto. I dabbled into stock options. I dabbled into a whole bunch of other things. So I I just determined in myself said, you know, just go for it. Go go all in and. Uh, learn learn along the way with the help of the, the program information. So. so your agent, your realtor, comes to uh-huh. you, and when you, st- you when did you meet this realtor? So he or sh- is it he? Right, it's a he. Yeah, he helped you with your first two properties. You said in Alabama, right? Right. And so, are they turnkey? Are they are, are they different from this type of property that you are purchasing right now? Yes. So. My my avatar, I guess, was to purchase turnkey properties. So my my avatar was turnkey. But after going through the um, the modules, I go, hey, I can I can stretch out my cash my cash reserves. And um, the the part what was the question again? The part that was afraid. It was well, scary? I guess I'm just wondering. Your realtor was helping mm-hmm. you in the beginning with turnkey properties. Oh, yes. And then you went through a shift. So mm-hmm. did he find you a different type of property that was not turnkey? Did he find you a Burr property? I guess I'm just wondering. Yes. yes it it all shifted, all of it, like yes, all of yes. it shifted for him and right. for you. How right. was that shift for him? I think um, it was difficult for him because I mentioned to him that in the beginning when I was working with him, I said, okay, I want turnkey properties. That's all I want. I would just want tenant on tenant occupied um, properties, and then after the after I started the program, I had to. I actually told him, "Okay, we're we're going to work this out differently. Differently now. I don't want any properties. Don't show any properties." <laughs> what with, did he with say? Tenants. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Like, what did he say he, when you he, said that to him? He says, he says, he says um, "What are you trying to do?" You know. And then I told him it's just a different way of investing, where I can stretch out my cash reserves. Nice. And. Um, so he he started to send me some properties off market and um, listed properties. Okay. So it was it was a change for him too. But how did you find him in the beginning? Because I know for our students, sometimes they wonder, and for and we're going to talk a little bit about you yeah. investing out of state. We're going to talk right. about that in a little bit. But one of the things that I know people have questions about is how do you find the people you trust? How do you find your mm-hmm. team? So I know you've been working with him for a long, long time, but in the beginning, right. do you remember how you found him in Alabama? Um, there is this, there's, there's of, of course MLS and they always have the realtors listed on there, but um, there, there is this um, site called Roofstop. I'm not sure mm-hmm. if ever, I'm, I'm, I'm sure if, a lot, a lot of you folks have heard that, but they they publish almost like MLS. So I was introduced. He was he was the realtor for um, those two rooftop companies that I purchased. Okay. Yeah. And then you just you just continue the relationship, right? So you mm-hmm. just continue to talk yeah. and have a conversation yeah. and work together and do all the things. Yeah. And he's still with you. Okay. So as far as the neighborhood that you mm-hmm. went to, did you just leave it up to him? And you, you said here, you know, I want single family or whatever you mm-hmm. said to him, you mm-hmm. pick the neighborhood and we'll figure out the numbers. Like, how did you make that 
switch from turnkey to a burr property? How what kind of parameters did you give him? Mm-hmm. So I did um I did I did give him just basically my avatar and um mentioned to him that I'm looking for um, properties in the BC neighborhoods, possibly um, you know, D plus or something, but um but however, I, I was and I, I did search on MLS, and I was I was pretty active as far as not just letting him find the properties and not letting him just search out the neighborhoods. I was pretty active, and you know, every day I set up notifications on um, Zillow, I set up no- notifications on other, um, um, I guess, listing uh, websites, and um, as as these notifications would come through, and sometimes I would get them before him. And I would say, hey, what about this? What about this property? What about this neighborhood? What is it about this neighborhood that you would or would not invest in? Mm. Um, or would you be safe walking there at night? Interesting. And, and he knew this? He knew all the, those answers and he is an investor yeah, himself? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, the good thing about these local agents, they know the neighborhoods. Yeah. And they know, they know um, yeah, they know the neighborhoods. Yeah. So I, I depend a lot on him. I depend a lot. On the contractors, yeah. Um, I, for example, last week I shot. I'm working with another real estate agent as well. I shot him an address. He said, "No, no, do you want to stay that? Stay away from there. That's pretty much a ghost town." Interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like you have to trust the people who are the boots on the ground, right? right? The people who live yeah. and work there. Okay, for, yeah. for this one property that has closed, tell us about what you were willing to tell us about the purchase price, Oops. how, how the process has been, cause it's under contract, right? Right. Right. So the, um, this was off market property that he, he came up to me one time, one day and said, yeah, do we have this, this home that, um, I'm selling for this sign um, like visual. And, um, again, like I mentioned earlier, I ran the numbers, um, everything looked well. He says there's a new roof, there's new. Um, HVAC, there's new water heaters, basically redid the electrical, and here's the price. And um, he, the price, the price point was really good. I mean, was it 68.68.5? Mm-hmm. And um, I think on Zillow, it's listed for 98. Wow. And um, so I, I jumped on it right away and I asked him, so why is she, why is she letting me go for that cheap? He, and basically, he said a lot of these, a lot of times, they just want, they don't want to deal with listing yet, and and they just want a quick sale. So, um, like I mentioned, I I got into the deal even before my my the company was set up, mm-hmm. even before bidding out lenders, yeah. and um, I signed the contract. I sent it out to. Um, I said, what did I do? I said I sent the proposal or the the not the contract but the the numbers over to two lenders, and I asked, okay, what can you give me or or I have this property in in contract, uh, what type of loan can you um, provide yeah. me? And so I just went I just went with uh, the one that would give me the what do you call that? I'm still learning all this. <laughs> that would lend lend me the most. Um, that would fit. That would fit the the in the calculator, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, good for you. And even going through that process, I found I, I found out that um, I was still I, I found out that certain lenders don't deal with um, Wyoming LLCs, and um, I had to go back with um, my accountant and say, hey, they don't deal with LLCs. We need to register mm. my Wyoming LLC. Mm-hmm. You know, all all of this while I'm still trying to, um, you know, meet the deadline for the for the purchase contract. Yeah, and still trying to get a contractor in there. Wow! And so it was it was a it was a nice it was a good learning curve. That's so good. All right, lots of questions, Dewey. So yeah. as far as the property itself, you have you seen it with your own eyes? <laughs> no, I have not. Just through. Photos. <laughs> so through your photos. realtor. <laughs> yeah, through my photos through my realtor, photos through my contractors, and um, that's I'm 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 trusting that uh, you're you're showing me the right you show me the the same house that I oh, <laughs> purchased. 
<laughs> so what is the the, pro the protocol that you went through? Did you bring a contractor in? What are your rehab possibilities? Like how, what did you think you, what do you think you need to fix before it can be rented? So my realtor, he, he was going in with, um, I guess still the turnkey eyes, right? Not, not bringing it up to a, a quality type of rental. Yeah. So he told me, oh yeah, the rehab would be about 20,000. So, so I, I, I haven't I had two contractors go in. One quoted me um, 35, the other quoted me 50 to 60. Wow. Those are and really different numbers. I know. <laughs> and I gave, I gave them the um, statement of work that I would want, the materials that, um, that I was looking for. And, and to let everyone know, all of that was from Pollock and Media's templates. Mm -hmm. And it was like, why, why reinvent the wheel? You know, we'll just we'll go with what they have. But that helped a lot. Mm -hmm. But um, I gave them, I gave the contractors about a week to submit, to go there, submit the their proposals. And I went back and forth with both of them saying, hey, can we, what can we do? What can we do to save costs on this? What yeah. can we, how can we do some cost savings on this? Mm -hmm. And um, so like Pollock would mention that, you know, the contract, we, we, we asked the contractors to be creative. So I I did ask the contractors, okay, how can we re how can we save be creative to save costs on this rehab project? So um, I I went I went through the whole review and I, I selected one. Okay, and how did you find those contractors in the first place? It was it was through my realtor. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So right. it's it's amazing. It, it's a matter. I think this this whole real estate investing um, is a matter of talking to people. And just making contacts and just say, hey, do you know someone? And and with even with the other contractors, I would ask, hey, do you know another realtor? Mm. Do you know? And just vice versa. And maybe next thing you know, you have you're meeting these people and just talking to them. You have a team. And, yeah. 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 And then when you meet them, do you meet them on Zoom or you just have a phone call with them? Like how do you just how do you figure out that they're your people? Do you a, go through a multi-step process or just kind of say, I like you, we're good? I think so. Well, I, I think that's, 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 um, I ask the basic questions. Yeah. I ask, I ask, uh, like, for example, lenders, I spoke with uh, uh, two, two lenders last, the other week, and I would just ask them the basic questions and, and just, just talk story, you know, get to know their personalities, just to, just to get the, just to see if you can vibe with them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there are some lenders I really, you know, okay, that was my first and last call. Um, other lenders, you know, I, I, I really. Um, like you're good with that. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So what is the final number? Like which contractor gave you the number that makes sense and what kind of rehab is happening in the home? Okay. So the, I, went, I went with, the, of course, the one with the lower, lower cost. Um, um, I need, I, work with them. I told them, you know, I really, I really don't want an external paint job mm -hmm. over a beautiful brick, a brick facade. You know, I, I really, I really like that brick, you know, old, old school brick facade look. So yeah. you really don't have to paint that. No. And that saved me a $4,000. And, um, <laughs> um, and so I'm sorry. And the, the question, well, I mean, so how much are you, how much are you paying? Okay. And what are they doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I think thirty-five thousand. Okay. And um, I they are doing a full kitchen, bath, two bath, and um, inter remodel. They're laying down um, LVP flooring um, throughout the home with new appliances. Wow. Uh, there's a basement. There's a basement on the bottom where they're going to leave that. Unfinished. When did you close, and where are you in the I process? I closed. I closed on is it December tenth? Happy New Year, huh? <laughs> no, was it December tenth? No, that's when I joined. January tenth. Oh, oh, okay. Wow. Oh my god. It just happened. Okay. Wait. Yeah, January tenth. Okay. So and you started uh, the program in December, and December fifteenth. You didn't waste any time, and the holidays happened, but. Yeah. And Clearly it didn't matter. <laughs> nothing. I, I tell you, during the holidays, nothing was 
everything was closed. <laughs> right. But you still got it done. I mean, that's amazing. Okay. Yeah. So where are you in the process of the renovation? When do you think it'll get done? I get the inspection and the appraisal done by um, just by the 10th and then hopefully closing the loan by the 15th of February. Wow. And then after that, the contract just can go in. How do you feel? Like this is a lot in the last two I, months. I'm I'm excited, but this it's, it's it's there's a lot of wheels. There's a lot of things going on, on top of my work. And yeah, um, what is your work, by the way? What do you do for a day job? Um, I'm in I'm in IT. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah. the move the, the plates are spinning right now is what yes. you're saying. The plates yes. are spinning. Okay. Uh, a lot of plates spinning. So um, but. So yeah, so I hopefully I can, I can, I can, I'm some some. Hopefully I can close a loan by um, by February fifteenth. Get the contractors in there uh, that same week. Uh, they mentioned to me it's and I'm not sure if this is standard, but they mentioned to me that it'll be a day per thousand dollars. So thirty five thousand dollars we have should take them about thirty five days to rehab mm-hmm. and get the get the yeah. ready for our rental. Why don't I? And um, and I already have a management company uh, in line waiting to um, yeah. prep the place for me. So, right, so. and this also from your realtor who? No, this was this was just from this was just from the internet search. Yeah. Just... Okay. What has anything surprised you about this process? And you've been doing real estate for a long, long time, but this particular. Yeah change in how you're purchasing properties with a hard money lender, with a huge rehab that you have to work on, on the back end. Has, any, has anything surprised you about this? The the thing that surprised me is um, how quickly, how quickly things move, especially with um, the hard money lenders. Um, the other thing that surprised me is how far I can stretch my money. Mm-hmm. And uh, my resources through through the poor process, mm-hmm. and um, and just the creative, just the hard money. The part, the part, the the thing that's that was new to me that surprised me was um, financing, and um, what was the other one? Financing, financing, and the and the poor strategy itself. Talk to me about the stretching of the money. I think that's really interesting because Pollock talks about that a lot. Yeah. And I know a lot of the people in the program, they look at hard money in a different light after mm-hmm. going through her program, after right. meeting her and Niti. But this is the first time I've heard someone like you say this, but you've said it stretched your yeah. money. So what does that mean right. to you? How does that look? What does that look like? Right. So for the for the two investment properties that I purchased just last year, um, I put down twenty five percent on the total purchase, and right there it it it, it set me back. Well, not set me back, but I, I invested about forty thousand. We have thirty to forty thousand piece. A piece, and, yeah. yeah. So I can do the math. Yeah. It's like eighty thousand ish, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, and and with the with the burst strategy, well, I I basically have, just have to come up with um, about I think. My closing docs, estimated closing docs, at fifteen thousand, or to come up with the closing, and then upfronting, of course, the uh, the rehab. Mm-hmm. And um, when I do my refinance, I am I believe I am I'll be only about two thousand dollars in 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 the property. Wow! So after the after the refinance, I'll be right two thousand, which is way better than. You know, thirty to forty thousand in. Yeah, so. and that you, that you'll get back one day, right? But right. you don't know when. Right. right. How has it been today? So, um, twenty twenty three. How has the process been as far as the interest rates? The well, I guess you're working with a hard money lender, but I mean the process is now. Of course, you did it during the holidays, so that was an extra special type of stress <laughs> that you put on yourself. But how has what is the market like in in your opinion as you are going through it right now? Um, what I'm noticing is that a lot of listed homes 
Um, it's, it's, I, think, I, I think it's beginning to become a buyer's market. Mm. Um, a lot of the a lot of the listing listed homes that I've earmarked and uh, that I've saved, and I noticed that a lot of them are going are selling are are being reduced ten thousand, mm. fifteen thousand. So um, I think I think it's a it's a good time for for investors to be in, in the game. Now, with regards to interest rates, um, I really don't care about the interest rates because of the at the end, basically, the tenant's going to be paid for mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. mortgage. Mm-hmm. So, um, it'll, it, it's, 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 and, and later down the line, analysts can do it fine. Mm-hmm. So, but at the end, the interest rates, of course, it'll affect, it'll affect the cash flow. Yeah. But, um, not so concerned about that. I mean, yeah. if we're all in there for the long run, the long oh. haul, then. Yeah. yeah. So, I would love to hear about, your thoughts on the program, the portfolio program, Niti and Pollock, how have they, how has the program, have they helped you get where you are right now? I think the, it's, it's, it's all the information. You have. And the thing that drew me to, to, to them, to them, it, it's not just a bunch of YouTube videos, or it's not just a bunch of seminars. It's, it's really, um, them answering questions that I have on a one-on-one. Well, not so much one-on-one, but you know, when you go to the office hours or you go to the Wednesday meetings and, um, or you replay those um, recordings when I can't make it. Um, it seems like everyone in the program has the same questions that, I'm, that I have. And most of the questions um, have been answered during those sessions. So it's, it's, I like it because there's, there's no, there's no stupid question, right? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> and they, they, they're, they're not, they're not ones to say, not again, do we? You know, but you're asking me, you're asking the same question that I answered like five, five days, five days ago. <laughs> but um, they're, they're not one to condemn or knock down, and they, they're really there to support and want the best, you know, for, for the students. They're very patient. That's for sure. They are very, very patient. So what would you say would be a main one or two takeaways that you've gotten from the program that could help somebody else? Yeah. I think the main take, one of the main takeaways um, for me at least is the, again, the creative financing, the hard money lending and the and the birth strategy. Mm-hmm. And um, just, again, just knowing, just just understanding those two helped me a lot as far as my my journey. Well, you've moved fast. I mean, really, you have moved fast. Not that speed is so important. I mean, it is as you are looking at the market for your own personal financing and all the things that you want to accomplish. But um, but you definitely have moved fast. Do you what's your goal? Like, what's your plan? Or are, are you and it, it sounds like you already have another realtor lined up <laughs> in the same area. But what is your goal as you as you look ahead over the next 12, 24 months? I think my goal, my, well, my my goal, of course, with, with a lot of a lot of those out there as well is to, you know, stop, retire for you call it? retire from my nine to five mm. and um, I can just spend time with my kids and just have more freedom. Yeah. Um, with regards to doors, um, I've, I've told my realtor that I, I'm looking and my lenders, <laughs> I told them I'm looking between seven to 10 this year. And, um, and, uh, I, and I told them, you know, I know it's lofty, but if it's not big, then it's not a goal for me. Mm. So, and, um, but I, I, w- I would like to quit my nine to five and then, and then two and a half, three years. So. You said it here. That's awesome. That really is. But it, it's going to be tough living in the Bay, living in the Silicon Valley. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I know yeah. that you've taken that into account as you're looking at properties outside of where you live. Mm-hmm. So one of the things I ask people who come on the show is to fill in the blanks to this sentence. Before the program, I... Now I, would you be able to fill in the blanks, please, to that sentence? Let's see, I think before I came into the program, I was afraid to uh, purchase any property that had to do any type of rehab. 
now I'm looking for properties that um, it, that need rehab. Even I think now even not just not just um, what do you call that? Not just surface rehab, but you know those those that are are a bit challenging. But as long as the numbers work, of course. But I think I think that that's what it's, it's it, uh, what excites me now is finding properties uh, to rehab the re whole rehab process. So it's um, it's fun. I like it. You sound like a different person. Like I didn't know you before, <laughs> but I mean, if you were going from turnkey to like you're you're going the ch more challenging, the better. It's it's pretty remarkable. And thank you, thank you for sharing your story and the lessons that you have learned along the way. Yeah.